Good afternoon. We'll just give it a few moments for everybody to load in through the webinar and then we will begin. So good afternoon and welcome to our Animal Management and Animal Science Degree Programmes webinar. I'm Kayleigh, I'm a graduate from Ritual University College and I now work within their marketing team. I'm joined here today by Yamila, John and Yvonne who are part of our academic team. And I'm also joined here by Grace who is our student ambassador. Before I hand you over to the academic team, I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to Ritual University College and why it's a great place to study. So what to expect from today's webinar? As I mentioned, I will give you a brief introduction to Rittal University College. I'll then pass you over to the academic team and they will give you um, a detailed explanation so you can get an understanding of the courses that we offer in animal management and animal science. And then we will answer any questions that you may have. Please feel free to put through your questions at any point during the webinar. You can do so by your control panel and we will get through to these in the live Q&A at the end. So firstly, why come to Rittal? We have a long-standing reputation for land-based courses since 1893. We are located in rural Essex, we are close to Chelmsford and we have some great transport links. We are a small and specialist institution, we are friendly, welcoming and supportive and we have that great community feel, meaning that we are an easy stepping stone if you're coming to us straight from school or college or if you're looking to get back into education. At Rittal, we offer a wide range of subjects and facilities, and we give that ideal blend of theory and practical learning. As well as great academic team, we have some fantastic support services, and they are there to ensure that you succeed and that you're able to make the most out of your student life. So I'd just like to shout about our National Student Survey results. Um, in 2020, we got 92% overall student satisfaction. This means that we were ranked highest in our university sector institution in England. And these are what our students have thought about what studying with us. So just to talk to you a little bit about our facilities, we are a large open campus um, of around 480 acres and we are surrounded by beautiful gardens and countryside. We have a dedicated equine centre, um, home to around 70 horses, including a working stud facility. We have our Titchmarsh Animal Centre, home to around 250 different species of animal. We have our Canine Therapy Centre, our 100 acre working farm. On our main campus, we have our library, our careers advisory service, and our purpose-built higher education study hub. We also have 14 halls of residence. We have our garden and restaurant, our Time Out Cafe, and our Starbucks. We also have our recreation and fitness centre, which includes a gym and a free weights room. And we also have our design studios, research labs, um, glass houses and our multi-faith room. So as I mentioned, we are um, in a great location in a beautiful Essex village. Within Rittal, you will be able to find um, a co-op supermarket. There's also some pubs. We have a famous Titri Tea Rooms. Um, it's also a doctor's surgery and a pharmacy there, as well as a few restaurants. We are really close to Chelmsford, just two miles away. Um, and if you need to take a break from studying, then um, in Chelmsford, you'll be able to find some fantastic shopping centres. Uh, we have a trampoline park, there's Everyman Cinema, and also a new leisure centre. Most of our student night outs take place in Chelmsford. Um, and here you will find plenty of pubs, clubs and bars that are there to satisfy all budgets and music tastes. If you are looking um, at going further away on your days off, um, we are less than 40 minutes from London, just a 40 minute drive to South and Seafront and only a half an hour drive from Stansted Airport. So university is a big step in life, so living away needs to have that home from home experience. All of our halls of residence are on our main campus and we have um, 14 halls of residence with around 400 rooms in total. We offer a range of room options, from a single room to a double ensuite, depending on your budget and your preference. All our accommodation has a common room and lounge, a small kitchen for making snacks and small meals at the weekend. Included in your accommodation price is our meal allowance, and you can use this within the garden room restaurant, the Time Out Cafe, and um, our Starbucks pod. Time Out Cafe is there and it sells um, groceries and snacks. 
We also have our laundrette on site, um, and this is used via an app on your mobile phone. And all um, first year students are guaranteed a place in our halls of residence. As well as great academic teams, there is a life outside of learning. And we have some fantastic support teams from our learning support and wellbeing to our student success team and our career support. We have a really great welcoming students union. And the students union is there for social life activities um, and for clubs. This year, things have had to be a little bit different. Um, so we had to make our events COVID safe. So we started with some SU bar events um, and then we've been putting some online fun activities. And also, um, hopefully when things get back to a little bit more normality, um, we will be able to start with some theme fundraising nights. Um, and also the Students' Union is there for sports um, societies and social nights. We have a small friendly students union team and there are some opportunities for you to get involved with them and um, outside your studying. So before I hand you over to the academic team, I'm just going to show you a short video about Rittle. The great outdoors and even greater indoors an education for the real world, putting theory into practice, smaller class numbers and supportive tutors, highest overall for student satisfaction, breaking new ground, breaking the mould for almost 130 years, around 200 open hectares outside Chelmsford, a close community that will welcome you inside, making lifelong friends experiences for life, being just 35 minutes from London, but a world away. Discover our hands-on industry-recognised courses, putting theory to the test, putting alumni in high places, putting your career first, putting science into practice. So that is just a whistle stop tour introduction to Bristol University College. I'm now going to hand you over to the academic team so they can talk to you more about the courses. You're just on mute at the moment there, Yamila. Okay, I was talking to myself for a while. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you see my screen all right? Yep. Yes. Perfect, thank you very much. So um, my name is Yarmila Bone and um, I'm the head of animal science um, a department at Rito University College. Um, and uh, today I've got lovely three supporters today. So we've got Grace, who is our final year student and Grace is also student ambassador. So Grace, we will try to bring you in to this talk today. Hope you don't mind. And then I've got my lovely colleague, Yvonne Owen, who teaches one of the most exciting modules in the first year and maybe ever. <laughs> and then John teaches also exciting modules and Yvonne <laughs> is also the main person or the main lecturer for the zoo and wildlife conservation. So she's going to talk to you about that. And then John is uh, one of um, our, um, John is principal lecturer and he's also very passionate about animal behavior and welfare, uh, research and everything. So John is going to talk about our options in pet behavior and welfare because he was involved in designing this, um, and this option and also livestock technologies because John is also passionate about the livestock and the welfare and uh, so all for us very passionate about what we do so hopefully we can pass as much information as we can in this short period of the time and share our passion with you okay so uh so we deliver courses in animal management and animal science and i can't help i have to cut this is one of my favorite photos this is with our students uh, in one of our trips to Umfafa in South Africa, which unfortunately we had to cancel last year. But hopefully the, the current situation will improve and we can start as, as uh, we can 
uh, resume those fantastic trips and internship opportunities for our students. Um, so I'm just going to try to next. Okay. So first of all, uh, animal science or animal management is not easy subject to study. Okay. And our Grace is you agreeing with me? You're saying it's not easy or it is easy. <laughs> It's not easy, but it's very interesting. <laughs> yes. So first of all, that would be probably a good question to ask because it's not easy to become Bachelor of Science. So that means you are very smart. And so first of all, you need to ask, OK, what's in this field for me? Is it something that I want to work directly hands on with animals? Is it the welfare? Is it the nutrition? Is it breeding? Is it, is it genetics? Is it improving the animal's genetic makeup? Or is it, be, is it behavior of animals? Is it, is it um, uh, health science that we're interested in? Is it zoo animals, farm animals, companion animals? The question, so there are so many questions you need to answer yourself. And even though you can't find answers to those questions, okay, if you know, I'm passionate about animals. I want to improve their lives. I want their lives to make to be better for future. Maybe to help to preserve some of the species. If you're passionate, but you still don't not you're not quite sure which area of uh, animal science or animal management you would like to go into. Hopefully, our team of experienced lecturers will help you to discover many from many areas of animal science and animal management of the animal industry that we probably didn't have much information about. So, but it is a good question to start because it's not easy, it's long time, and let's face it, it's quite expensive as well. So we need to make sure that we're investing our money or your money very well. So what you can study with us. So we have two main um, sort of uh, like areas. One is animal science and one is animal management. So um, and so some modules, especially in the first year, or the majority of modules are the same. So you can say you enroll in animal management, but you think I, I prefer the science a little bit more than you can transfer or the other way around. OK, so we're very flexible how we design our Program. So animal science is more looking into the fundamental science behind how we keep animals and then animal management has a little bit more holistic approach. So, for example, uh, animal scientists, just to clarify this, they, they, we've got modules that are breeding and genetic, animal uh, genetics and development. So the scientists, they will be looking more at the more the genetics, the core science, while the managers would be looking more at the practical applications of those genetics. So how do we make animals, um, uh, you know, healthier, better? And, and so on, or we know we've got problems with pedigree dogs, some of the issues, so how do we get rid of those issues by, you know, uh, managing the breeding of, of uh, animals and so on, that applies to any animal species. Um, so that's animal science and animal management, and within those, it doesn't matter whether you study animal science or animal management, you can choose options. And those options are zoo and wildlife conservation. That's hence Yvonne is here. That's one of our most popular ones. <laughs> and then we've got pet behavior and welfare. That is also very popular. And, um, and livestock technology. So let's move on. So within those headings, what courses do we offer? So we're very flexible and I love the flexibility and I will tell you why I like the flexibility and, and I'm sure our colleagues do as well because we, um, when we revalidated our courses, we decided to go with the same structure. So we've got one year course, which is called the higher certificate uh, or the certificate of higher education in animal studies. Then we've got two year course diploma of higher education that could be either animal science or animal management. And then we've got the BSc honors degree in animal science and animal management. This is three years full time course. Now, if you've got 96 credits, 
you can go straight onto the honours degree. If you don't have 96 UCAS credits, but you have 80 UCAS credits, you can go on to the PEGI. And if you don't have 80 UCAS credits, but you have 48 UCAS credits, then you can go on to Certificate of Higher Education. So there is a flexibility. And then once you say you don't have enough credits, you, can, you only have enough credits for the higher certificate, once you successfully complete the first year of higher certificate, you can go straight on to the second year of either DPHG or honours. So you don't have to start from beginning, you just carry on. Okay, so that is that is really good that, uh, you know, you, you have all the different um, uh, the entry points uh, you can you can use. And also having this uh, flexibility is good that we, you know, three years is a is long time. And in the past, we had students that uh, enrolled on the honours degree, but their personal circumstances change, could be either about personal or health issues. And uh, so say after one year or, or two years, we don't have to say to students, okay, goodbye, you leave with nothing. We can look at the profile of those students and say, okay, although you enrolled on honours degree and because of your circumstances, you have to leave, but you've got 120 points so far you achieved. So we can give you certificate of higher education. Or if you achieve 240 points and you have to leave, we can give you the page. Okay, so that is very good that we very rarely have students leaving with nothing because the structure we've got, we always, there is always something we can offer to our students. Or we can say, you know, you want to leave, but you short of 15 credits. If you do that, you can at least have this qualification and then you can take your credits. And if you want to return, or if the students want to return to education in those places, they can come back. So that is for us, it's very important that the students don't waste time and they don't waste their money as well. Okay, moving on. Okay, so we've got biology preferred, but not essential. You may think we're crazy because maybe some colleges, some universities, if you want to become Bachelor of Science, they say you need biology, okay? but not at Ritter University College. And the reason is, and my colleagues, you can step in anytime, you can unmute yourself, I'll be happy if you can add something. One of our best students we ever had, and I've been working with John since 2005, we've been working together, okay? And one of our, st another student is sitting here on the panel representing the academic team as well, Yvonne, don't roll your eyes. <laughs> so some of our best students came with no biology background. And if you would say to these students, sorry, we don't want you, we wouldn't have Yvonne sitting today here on our team and being and supporting students in their studies. Or we had uh, another student who came, but her background was in languages. She was a linguist. And today she's doctor of genetics. John uh, was working with another of our uh, students who came with um, no science background whatsoever. English language wasn't the first language for this student. Today, she's doctor of microbiology, I believe, John. That's right. Yeah. 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 University of Warwick. Yeah, works like to said, yes, so PhD from University of Warwick. So, and if we would say no to these students, we wouldn't have these great scientists or lecturers, professionals uh, today. So we say biology is preferred, but not essential because we've got a great team of lecturers that would support you in this first of year of study. So for example, Yvonne and myself, we've been teaching the science mod, the animal biology, anatomy, physiology, and so on for many years together. We've got other colleagues helping. We've got experience, uh, biochemists as well. So there is a lot of support and, and the result shows that we, we do decent job <laughs> out of it. So when the students go through. So uh, some suitable work experience helps, okay? Guys, if you here because you've seen some fancy program on telly but never had any experience with animals, please do. Because we had students in the past 
that I can see my hair is a little bit funny there. Okay, <laughs> so that came to us because uh, just one particular example, a student said, oh, this is too hard, it's too much science. Well, it's, you're studying towards Bachelor of Science. Next week, the same student came, oh, they took us on the pig unit and oh, the pig smell. I'm like, well, animals do smell occasionally. And um, and when I asked these students, so why did you come here to study? The answer was, well, I saw this program on telly and I thought it would be fun and, and, and could be cool to do this because I want to be a vet. So guys, I'm sure you have some experience, but please have some experience because that really, really helps to really appreciate and keep ourselves motivated while we're doing these studies. Okay, so what subject? Yvonne, would you like to talk about animal biology? Animal biology is <laughs> a module that runs through uh, both semesters, so your uh, runs through the, the entire first year, and we start off by teaching you about mammalian systems, so um, mammalian and anatomy and physiology, and it is hands-on, we do practicals, but you have a lecture on a Monday to tell you all the information and then a joining uh, practical on the Thursday. Lots and lots of information learnt there. Um, it can be quite difficult for some, but we manage to get them all through because there's lots of terminology, words like erythropoietin and things like that. But generally the students have fun. Um, and especially when they go into semester B, because then we move from just to focusing on mammalian systems to comparative anatomy and physiology, which is absolutely desperately exciting. And we work our way through the vertebrate classes. So we start with fish, we go to amphibia, reptiles, birds, and then back to mammals and we can compare and contrast and students actually get to see physically realize and see evolution that has go, goes through these uh, vertebrate classes and they really really like it and if we're lucky um, we can do an inside nature's giants dissection which is an event bright um, we, so far we've done two we've done an alligator and we've done uh, a huge steak and uh, we've got some boss monitor lizards and an alligator still, so we may do it again. We've done that that um, reticulated python we dissected in a in a lecture theatre with quite a few students observing. It was about 15 feet long, wasn't it, or something? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. One. So then we've got module practical, anim so animal husbandry is practical module where we take students onto our facilities, as we mentioned in presentation, equine unit, small animal unit, we've got farm. And uh, so we, we still, even during the lockdown last semester, we managed to have those practicals, which was good because we put extra risk assessment and smaller groups of students. Um, um, and then we've got health and welfare modules, we study animal ethics, um, John here is for animal behaviour, um, nutrition, if you don't like maths, I'm sorry we do statistic, but we've got a great team of lecturers, John in professional skills in um, in first year introduces uh, students to the the, the, the to, to data handling and then it carries on with statistics in second year and then John also will talk to you later about the dissertation module how that is organized we've got breeding and genetics so there is a wide range of modules and then we've got those options within okay, so we've got, we've got a, a sort of the core subject and then we've got the specialist subjects which now I will ask my colleagues to talk to you about so that's the zoo wildlife conservation pet behavior and welfare and livestock technology so guys I will operate the powerpoint but you just tell me when you want me to move on yeah so I think we will start with Yvonne so even Yvonne over to you so um one of the options streams is zoo and wildlife conservation. I lead that module and it's taught in the second year and in the third year. 
Um, it's a very exciting module. It's for people that want to learn about lots of different animals. They may want to work in a zoo. They could be curator, educationalist, zookeeper, wildlife management as well. Lots and lots of different areas. But in the second year, um, it's more practical based. So we'd be doing things like talking about, about zoos, the ethics of it, doing a debate, collection planning. How would I build an enclosure for a specific species? Um, I'm going to breed from this animal or not. We do handling and restraint, escape protocols, um, and where we can't facilitate uh, teaching at uh, Rittle, we take our students out for customised uh, off-site visits. So they will go to Colchester Zoo to learn how different um, carnivores are managed, for example. Um, or how they train their zoo animals. They go to Paradise Wildlife Park and learn all about the different hoofed animals, the ungulates, and that is an amazing day out, believe me. Um, and with regards to the primates, we'll either take our students to uh, Port Lim or Howlett's. So on these visits, it, remember we're talking about HE now. When you go to the zoo and the, you get the keeper talks, it's generally um, quite a low level based at kind of teenage type but we get HE level information and we get a, an actual keeper taking us you know, behind the scenes. Um, so yes we do visits and we've got guest speakers in, we discuss the different job opportunities that are available from learning about zoo and wildlife. Um, so yeah how, how to plan a zoo um, do system we have zims not not many uh universities have this software but it's used by every single accredited uh zoo globally basically it's called zims the zoo information management system and for our students to have on their cvs that they know how to use it is a really good um badge if you like so it will help to open doors for them um, so, very practical uh, based in the um, the second year, but when we go into the third year, we we talk more about developments um, in zoo management. So zoos are part of a global community. These days, we're doing conservation efforts aligned with each other. Communication is is vital. Um, so, zoo management development it might include current issues that they have to deal with. For example, how do they deal with social media and the fact that every member of the public has literally got a potential for a live streaming video in their hands. Um, talking about sustainability, making the zoos sustainability. Education of the public, research, um, and as I said, conservation and breeding. So um, being part of the global community, we learn about organisations such as BIASA, so that's the British one, and Rittle is an educational associate of BIASA, which is the British and Irish um, Zoo and Aquaria. I've probably got that wrong there. Um, so right. BIASA or European, EASA, WASA, etc., worldwide. Um, and yes, we do have some good uh, guest speakers joining us on that. And we work. Um, and we look at the work of sister groups and daughter groups, so not just uh, BIASA or WASA, but also the IUCN and taxonomic advisory groups. So it's an exciting, a very exciting journey that the students progress through. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Yvonne, it was smashing. And I can tell you, I sometimes sneak onto those zoo trips and I've been behind the scenes in tiger enclosure and hyenas and uh, penguins and uh, it is exciting yes so, seals. yes seals yeah loads yes brilliant anyway john now over to you if you can tell us something about the pet behavior and welfare certainly can so um pet behavior and welfare is for the the companion animals it, it's there's a lot of it is about dogs and i'm going to be telling you about uh, the association 
for pet behavior counselors in a moment but essentially it's it's a it's the training is a large part of the animal behavior here there's a there's a lot to do with um, the training of our pets. Pet ownership has never been greater in the world and particularly in the UK. So um, that this um, module all set is about um, two groups. It's about training the animals in our care. And it is also about maintaining the, the behavioral aspects of welfare, particularly those behavioral disorders that we see in our dogs in our cats in our in our birds and in a number of different species um, the exciting thing about this particular set of modules is the professional accreditation that we're, we now have for for these particular courses Yumela, can we move on to the the next slide yes, of course John yes Thank you. Okay. so um, the, the, because of uh, particularly if we're concentrating on the behavioral disorders or you might consider them as diseases because that is clinical, as in you, you have a disorder that you're trying to um, fix through treatment, um, this is under the domain of the, the vets. So the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons oversees all of the clinical aspects of uh, uh, animals in our country. But the vets don't have a particular expertise in behavior. So they have devolved this to a, another body called the Animal Behavior and Training Council which oversees the accreditation of courses. Now, this is particularly important because in, in, in recent times, it's been recognized that um, a lot of the animal um, people who call themselves trainers, we could, all of us on this call, on this side of the camera and on your side of the camera, could all call ourselves animal behaviorists and set up a website tomorrow and start selling our services. And this is causing real problems as people are training dogs in a poor way. We're seeing increasing problems, both in aggression, both in um, separation anxiety and a number of other disorders are becoming much much greater in society and then it's partly fueled by people who are not trained but are being paid to, to manage these processes so that the, the vet school are going to really clamp down on these so people who are going forward to be animal trainers will be required to demonstrate de um, accreditation to get um, very specific um, working titles. So a veterinary surgeon or a veterinary nurse, they are protected titles. Uh, we can't call ourselves veterinary surgeons. We can't call ourselves veterinary nurses unless we have that kind of qualification. So, uh, so Yamila uh, is a veterinary surgeon, so she can call herself uh, Dr. Yamila Bone, veterinary surgeon. But um, the rest of us can't do that because we don't have that accreditation. The ABTC have these um, four levels of um, professional uh, standards, animal trainer, animal training instructor, animal behavior technician, and clinical animal behaviorist. And they're important because our um, the options within the pet behavior and welfare course will lead directly to these to these places so uh, for the the diploma was so the second year courses there's two modules there would lead to the animal trainer and animal training instructor positions and the and the um the final year courses would lead to the animal behavior technician and clinical animal behaviorist and what we've done we went through quite a big um accreditation exercise with abtc which means that uh, the educational aspects of all of these qualifications are within our own qualification so graduates from this scheme who go out there don't have to provide any further evidence for the educational aspects and that makes registering with a professional accreditation body of which there are many under abtc so the association for pet behavior counselors or the association for pet dog trainers or a number of other equivalents accept all of these um, straight away um, for, um, to be uh, somebody who um, trains animals the puppy parties the dog um, uh, obedience that's the animal training instructor if you want to be the person the, the, the dog whisperers and uh, and uh, you want to sort the behavioral problems then you need to go for clinical animal behaviorist on the on the honors degree you have to have a degree to be on that program so and um, that so that's our pet behavior and welfare program uh, it's new program it's also we're getting a whole lot of exciting new facilities we now have um, fully fenced paddocks um, and we have um, 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 an internal training area with an external yard as well we'll have a clinical observation laboratory with one-way glass you, you want to think about your police interview rooms that you've seen on all your netflix um, um, police dramas but in this case we're going to have a lounge set up on one side and a mini lecture theater on the other side so people will be observing these consultations through glass and uh, um, with the av that goes with that so exciting times for our pet behavior students uh, coming up 
Yeah. 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 So we really we are in the process of uh, really establishing. That's that's our dream to have the regional K9 Academy at Ritter University College. That is the yeah. That's that's what John Absolutely. was talking about. We, yeah. Yeah, we won't find anything else like it anywhere. Not in yeah. the UK, certainly. Okay. Um, so and um, so that's our pet behaviour uh, module. And then the, the final of the the three option routes is livestock technology. So um, my particular passion in life is the welfare of farm species. Animal production and sustainable um, food production has never been more important than it is now in 2021. Um, there's a lot more than, than food production. Uh, you know, there's uh, the, the One Health that was uh, on the slide earlier and all the, um, the, the connections between and between um, animals and humans just in health but, but particularly um, producing sustainable food while maintaining high levels of animal health and high levels of animal behavior is a real challenge and that challenge is met by animal science so livestock technology is, um, is, is really exciting I also think it's really exciting because in terms of employability livestock technology graduates are in a really really good place there are many many graduate training schemes for these students students who come out of livestock technology have a very good chance of going straight into management training jobs um, uh, within our local south uh, uh, east of england region and wider it's, it's something that you can take abroad it's something you can go everywhere really good jobs in nutrition and, uh, and others we're going to talk about careers later on because we're very very proud of that part but to get you there, you need the experience and you need the science. So the nice thing about livestock technology is that as our access to our own farm units and also um, local farm units. So students will be on the farm uh, um, um, one week, but the week before they'd have prepared, prepared that in lectures, they'd have prepared that in sessions. And then they look at the holistic um, view and they interview the farmers and they talk through the whole systems and, and this goes alongside all our core modules in nutrition and behavior and health and welfare uh, in other modules as well next week so one week it might be the beef farm the next week it'll be the, the um, poultry unit and when it comes to Easter it'll all be about lamb production and in the autumn it'll be about um, the, the, the um, topping of the ewes you know there's, there's so much going on the farming calendar it's a very very exciting course and you know with everything from the production of piglets at one end to the, the the management of the farm there's so many careers in livestock management and also those ancillary and um, um, aspects involved in and in, in supporting the the farm and means that employment is very good we're a member of a professional organization the british society of animal science we're one of only four universities in their and in their stakeholder organization so and we interact with them very much we take students there as well as to other major events like the pig and poultry fair and dairy tech and you know there's all sorts of opportunities in livestock uh, livestock technology is a it's a very modern module that the finally is all about science into practice, which is very much what Rittle is all about. And um, my research in dairy cow welfare, you know, we, we've had over a million pounds of re research funding into livestock welfare in the last six years. So it's, it's a very vibrant area and, you know, and that, that's really important for students. Just while we finish off the options, I think it's worth pointing out that our, our options are really much a specialism. They are very, very much an icing on the cake, though. The, these options are, are four modules within a 24 module program. So you are first and foremost an animal manager or an animal scientist. We have plenty of students who've come out with a zoo and, and wildlife kind qualification and have gone on to a PhD in dairy health. And in the similar way, we have people go through the livestock um, courses that are also very set to be working in a, in a zoo community because that working with the large animals and the different um, skills there make it very transferable. So the options are very or can send you down the career path that you really care about, but they don't pigeonhole you at all. I don't think that's really important. And also, you make your choice of option. Um, although you choose it now, you can, uh, uh, you know, the options kick in at the end of the uh, beginning of the second year. So if you, you change your mind, and a lot of people move towards the livestock as they um, appreciate the, the, the importance and the beauty of farm animals in their animal husbandry lectures in that first year. The transfer is so straightforward. Um, so, um, yeah, that, 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 think about those options are, are specialisms, and again, 
they're built into our flexible program. Yeah, yeah, as John says, thank you, John, thank you, Yvonne. Yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say. So, John, thank you very much. Uh, so, yeah, we're very flexible. So, don't think because I choose this pet behavior and welfare, I can't work anything else. What our main is to keep those degrees flexible so you can get the job opportunities to get as much experience as you can but you still need to enjoy your study okay so and if you learn, love studying about pet behavior or farm livestock or the zoo and wildlife conservation then yes do that and then you have already something on your cv in your portfolio that you can demonstrate that you've got great great um, knowledge and experience and skills to continue in that uh, chosen career path. Okay, so just going just to tidy up a little finish of the presentation, I keep a guy on time, we've got three minutes before we need to start questions. So our animal courses incorporate practical husbandry skills. So we've got in the first year, we've got the module animal husbandry. And then uh, second and third year, there is less practical because there is really more focus on the academic um, uh, subjects, but we still encourage students to have the work experience as well alongside because, guys, what you must remember, when you graduate one day, there will be other hundreds of students graduating with degrees in, they would be bachelors of science, so what you need to make sure that you stand out, that your CV is different. So throughout your study, even if it's two weeks in your Easter break or two months in the summer or you've got gap on your timetable, say our first years don't have lectures on Wednesdays. If you can get work experience, job shadowing someone, just treat your CV almost like a portfolio because you never know what can, when you're applying for jobs or you want to have your own business, what makes you more, um, you know, reliable and gives you good reputation. So start even now, even before you start with us, you now get those work experiences because you, you need to be unique, you need to stand out. Uh, so we've got other resources, we've got microbiology lab, we've got nutritional biochemistry uh, labs as well, molecular biology, DNA lab. Um, and if we don't have something up till COVID, we were very successful in taking students on the field trips. However, because we got those links with industry, because we can't, we weren't unable uh, to, uh, to to take students out, we had external speakers. And Yvonne, you had some. You can probably mention. You've got half of a minute <laughs> to talk. I'm sure we've got a little bit more. Well, um, one of our guest speakers um, came through to the students in a, a system like this, and uh, he he spoke for three hours. They were absolutely captivated. His name's Aaron Whitnell and he's um, part of Paradise Wildlife Park and the Hertfordshire um, Zoological Society and he talks about the roles within zoos, uh, the considerations you have to make, the, the conservation efforts they're doing, how to get uh, uh, into this industry. He gave some examples. He's been on TV on a, a kids programme they created, One Zoo Three. Um, and he's also going to be on TV next year as well um, with his drive for wildlife, where they raised enough money to buy a pet, not a pet, um, an animal ambulance, and they took it out to, to Africa and all the, the experiences they had there. Yeah, thank you. So, and I know I've got a few requests from colleagues from John. We're talking about one fantastic external speaker coming to talk to our students, hopefully, and so on. So, if we can't take students out, we're trying to bring the expertise, although it's online, but still an expertise, and then hopefully we'll be able to get back onto those field trips. And this one is fantastic picture again, is from Umpapa Reserve in South Africa. And I'm really hoping that our students will have the opportunity to go there again. So this is one of some of our teams. So we've got John, Yvonne, uh, myself, <laughs> looking at myself, I'll yeah. So anyway, so and uh, and we've got other specialists. We've got specialists in nutrition, conservation, molecular biology, 
genetics. Nicola is our new addition. She's a, a conservation vet. Um, we've got clinical behaviour is Debbie, evidence-based practice, Nieki, livestock specialist, Nick, and also last week I we welcomed to our team two new members of staff. One is um, a specialist again in a more company and zoo wildlife uh, area and the other one is to support the livestock um, uh, modules. So we've got good team to support students throughout and um, apparent, this is one of our uh, uh, um, sessions. Yeah, inside the nature's giants where we dissected in our lecture theater, big alligator. The guy you see on, on the screen is one of our alumni. He works within the reptile industry. So, and we just did post-mortem on the alligator as well. So we, we invited students to watch. We also dissected the, the reticulated python. Uh, with Ed in presence and um, so it's, it's really good. So we have our alumni coming to talk to us. Apparently we listen to students, but Greg can comment on that a little bit more whether we listen to students. We try our best. <laughs> I can you... confirm we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and there was no box of chocolates or nothing delivered to Grace before. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Also, the students say that there is a good balance of lectures and practicals, and uh, and that you're ready to our team. And, oh, uh, what's going on? I'm I'm hearing myself for some reason. <laughs> and these are the curious opportunities. So I don't know, John, you the final year uh, future whether you would like to talk about those briefly. I'm just checking. We've got yeah ten minutes left. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so in February we've got a really important to careers event, uh, even uh, the Air Meet uh, software is allowing us to meet with lots of employers and get them in, in small groups. We have people, uh, we have students going, uh, we have the possibilities from this course are in nutrition and, and, and certainly in zoo management. So we have a, a half a dozen keepers currently at uh, Colchester Zoo and certain keepers all, all over the place. And uh, veterinary, pharmaceutical and equipment supplies is one of the biggest employers at the moment. There's a lot of there's jobs all over the place there. Animal welfare officers and the, the, um, the RSPCA, progression and progression to vet school is something that I know particularly uh, people are interested in. We know the Royal Vet College, uh, the, the London School, uh, is particularly interested in our students, but we, we have students who, who have gone to Bristol and Liverpool and, and the Scottish uh, colleges particularly as well. Um, Postgraduate study, we've mentioned a few of our PhD students, but actually we are a bit of a PhD factory. We, we've produced lots of students who've gone on to um, MSCs and PhDs uh, and later on. Research as well. Um, teaching and lecturing, we've got we've, we've fledgling lectures all over the place, and all these other um, careers that we put here. But um, why I'm particularly proud of this um, slide on behalf of all of us is that I can give you one name for every single one on there, probably a half a dozen names for all those bullets. These are not careers that you could do with our course. These are careers that people have done from our degrees. Yeah. And uh, we're really, really proud of that. So everything we write down here, we, we can support that with evidence, which makes our evidence-based practice man very happy as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So these are the actual jobs that our uh, students went into, not what you could do with your degree. So that is really good. So, and really with science degree, anything is possible and you can start your journey within this exciting field with us. And Thank you and happy to answer any questions. And um, Keely, sorry we overran a little bit, but hopefully we still got time to answer some questions. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Have I stopped? Yes. Yeah. So just before we go through to the excuse my laptop. Just before we go through to the Q and A, I just want to give you some a little bit more um, on where you can find some more information. Um, so obviously we have our website and we are running um, one to one sessions, which will take place next Wednesday, the twenty seventh of January. Um, you will be sent a link to book onto these. Um, however, you can use the QR code that is on your screen now. 
We also have our virtual open day hub and here you can find some more course presentations. Um, you can look at our support functions about um, student life, um, which also we are running student life webinars tomorrow. So if you haven't yet, yet done so, please do book onto those. And um, if we do run out of time to answer your questions, please make sure that you book onto a one to one session. So for now, we will just start on the questions. So firstly, um, oh, okay, with the deadline looming, how can I talk to someone? Um, as I've just mentioned, we've got the one-to-one -one session, so please do book yourself on to one of those. Um, is the deadline application the 29th of January? I can go through admissions if that's all right. Uh, now, the, those one-to-one -one sessions are on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, so you can book uh, a slot. Now, there is a UCAS deadline. If you miss this deadline, then you can still apply to what is called UCAS clearing. So even if you miss the deadline 29th of January, then you can you will be applying through UCAS clearing, but your uh, application would be considered as, as normal application. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, if you haven't got A-levels, and don't have a lot of professional experience within the specific industry are other circumstances still considered yes so we've got for those uh, sort of unusual en entrance we've got the higher certificate in animal studies where we would be looking at so we we say 46 UCAS points but we would really need to so what I would suggest uh, if I don't know who is asking the question would be to con send um, you can send email to Keely to, to you know regarding admissions and we've got admissions tutor who will look at those you know more individual cases ask for all information and so on and we will try to really work out the way uh, you could be also if there is still not enough to go on to her certificate we are also um, uh, running from September something that is called foundation foundation year as well so that could be an option as well but I would say in circumstance like this to just through Keely through the uh, marketing if you can if you can uh, you know just say I'm interested in attending the webinar can I please speak to admissions tutor or have more information Gilly we can't hear you thank you <laughs> um, if you are a mature student with many years professional experience and educated to level five behavior management would you still need to do the full three-year course for the degree i think that's again question for me or if anyone else is happy to answer accredited prior learning yes absolutely so what i would suggest in this instance if you again can contact our admissions still apply through you and then what we can but maybe you can have a chat with our admissions tutor because we can have a look what the level five qualification is and maybe we can give you credits like Yvonne's accreditation prior learning and that but we need to mix match our first year modules with the level five qualification that you've got and there could be possibility that you can go straight on to the second year but we would need to see the modules learning outcomes for modules and really more detailed information about the about the qualification perfect um are there specific types of animal experience you guys as a faculty would prefer anyone can answer i, I think um and then in terms of animal experience, there's, there's such a range out there of, of things that are going on. I think um, understanding the, 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 I mean, the important thing is being um, engaged with what you are doing and not just following what somebody is telling you to do. And I think um, trying to um, ask the questions and finding a placement that will allow you to ask the questions that you feel comfortable in. So why am I feeding the, this animal at this time? Why am I using this particular material? And what, what are the other options out there? And that kind of critical approach to um, that the animal experience is really important. I remember 
um, way back when I was doing my experience for animal science before I in animal science, which was you know, when dinosaur nutrition was still a module. Um, but, but they, we would, um, I, I would stand outside at the back of the veterinary theatre watching everybody doing stuff without really being involved and didn't get much from that. But when I did six weeks on a on a, on a, a family farm where, uh, as in it was a show farm to the public and we had so much going on, suddenly, because I, I had so much more to do and uh, the farm manager was um, a, a, a pupil from my old school, but 10 years above me, he, he got me so involved with everything that uh, I had much greater understanding. And, and in my application, um, much more of my experience came from that placement than it did from the veterinary placement. So I think it's about about being engaged, but it it doesn't matter if it's on the farm or at the can shop or um, in something that's more um, relating to um, dealing with the public. So being on the main desk of the animal char charity shelter um, rather than being behind the scenes in the kennels can be equally valuable experience for what we're doing here. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so any any experience you can get is good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, what exams will be done if you are doing the zoo and conservation degree? Yvonne. Um, for that, sorry. For that stream, there's there aren't exams, so there are assignments that students have to do. And they're quite varied and they're also quite interesting. So far um, on the second year module, the students have produced um, a husbandry guide, a husbandry man manual for a species which currently doesn't have one. Um, and they've also scripted and produced their own keeper talk. So they had to choose a species, imagine that they were out there doing it, tell me what their audience were, were they mainly children, were they only disabled, and then deliver their talk as part of their assignment. That was so much fun for them to do and for me to mark. And going through it again, yes, it will be by assignment or project. Um, so no exams for that particular option stream. Yeah. But there will be exams for other modules. It's just for the specialist modules, there is no exam, but there will be exams in say um, in uh, research methods or exams in animal biology so there would be other but we've got I think good balance and then again Grace can probably mm -hmm. talk about from student point of view that is not really exam heavy the degree. Grace? No it, it's mainly coursework which is better for me because I don't do I don't like exams and <laughs> um, the exams if we have any exams some of them are open book so you can bring in your stuff with you but there's not many at all it's perfect for me yeah. <laughs> so we try to have a balance of assessments yes coursework yeah. talks presentations some exams but yeah it's not exam heavy yeah Perfect. Thank you very much. So we are running out of time. Um, so Grace, I'm just going to aim this last one um, at you. So as I say, unfortunately, if your questions have not been answered, please do book on to a one to one session um, and you will have a half an hour slot with one of our academics um, and they will be able to talk through any of your questions. So what does an average day at Ritter look like? Um, let's take first year. So an average Monday for me was nine to five, um, but it's not, that sounds really heavy. It's not really heavy. Um, it's a, you have different lessons in that, and they're all a mixture of variations of how you're taught. So they might be interactive, they might be sitting looking at a PowerPoint, um, but then the other days will be really light. So take a Tuesday, I'd start at 10 and finish at three. So it all depends on your module and what you do. And you did practicals on Tuesdays? Yes, Tuesday afternoon was my practical. Um, and then Monday, um, Tuesday morning, sometimes would be a practical, sometimes would be um, a theory lecture. Yeah. Okay. And then Thursday, Thursday. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Do you want me to go through my whole week? <laughs> 
yeah, <laughs> if you've got the time. <laughs> there was nothing on Wednesday. Thursday, we had a dissection lecture, which was very smelly, and you don't ever get used to the smell. <laughs> um, and then I think we had a theory lecture in the morning. Friday, oh, it seems like ages ago. Friday, yeah. we had, I think, was mainly theory in the morning and then an early finish Friday afternoon. Yeah. Sorted. Yeah. It's sorted. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Grace. Um, so unfortunately, that does bring us to the end of our webinar. Um, just so you can see on your screen at the moment, if you haven't yet done so, please do book onto a one-to-one -one session. Um, if you've missed a QR code, please don't worry. Um, you will be sent the link to do so tomorrow. Um, so I'm just going to show you a quick video on how to access our virtual applicant hub. But that will be it from us. So thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. I hope you have a lovely weekend and we will hopefully see you in September. Thank you for listening, guys. <laughs>